So just in case uh, anybody was interested, I thought I'll make a quick video on this. <clears throat> the mystery of why magic mushrooms go blue solved. Very interesting. Because, uh, you know, I, I thought it was just the psilocybin, or the, you know, the acid, so to speak. And turns out it is, basically, but the, the, the hole goes a little bit deeper. It's a little bit more complex than that. Okay, so they ask the question, why does it turn blue? Uh, in the process of revealing the dark, blue, the dark blue pigments at the center of the mystery are similar to indigo, the dye used to produce blue genes. So in Boletius mushrooms, or I don't know how you say that, Boletales, Boletus, right? Boletalis. Mushrooms oxidized uh, gyrosanin, gyrocyanin, or polvinic acid are the source of the blue change. When you pick up the, the Boletus there, as it shows there. So, previous research had established that the blue color was caused by oxidized psilocybin. You know, now we're talking back again about the magic mushroom. But the nature of the pigment and the biochemical pathway produced it, it producing it had remained elusive. So as we know, psilocin is the like dried form of psilocybin. When you pick magic mushrooms, when if you dry them, it turns to psilocin and the trip's completely different too. And you don't have an alive being. It's different. It's like you're, it's more like when you take dried mushrooms, it's more like you're um, reading the corpus of, of the mushroom. Do you understand? It's like reading Einstein's theory of relativity, but you're not actually talking to Einstein. Do you understand? When the mushroom is alive, it's more like you're talking to Einstein, not just reading his theory of relativity or something, or known as a corpus or body of work or Magnus Opus, great work. Anyway. Alright, so. Hoffmeister. <laughs> nice name. I reckon that's a sweet name. Hoffmeister. <laughs> sweet name, dude. Uh, okay, so, look at this. Uh, Alright. When they tried, like previous researchers tried to extract and purify, purify the blue compound, they failed. It puzzled and challenged us, says Hofmeister. This is where previous researchers, very talented people, had to give up. And that's where we went one step further. Good on you, Hofmeister. Awesome, bro. I'm very happy you went further. Look how, look how much they went into it. This is hectic. They dug deep indeed. Uh, Alright, so yeah, they pulled out the whole toolbox. Liquid chromatography, mass spectrometry, MALDI mass spectrometry. I don't even know what MALDI is. Infrared spectroscopy, as well as time resolved, nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy. So they pulled out the whole bag of tricks. And... <clears throat> what we found out was it's not just a single compound like psilocybin but a complex mixture of linked psilocybin oxidation products most of them are quinoid psilocyl oligomers it's an oligomer hey why won't it show me google it should get me google yeah you're gonna have to search that for yourself but I, luckily, I prepared this earlier, my knowledge on this, and an oligomer is like a, uh, a polymer. Anyway, compounds not unlike indigo, a deep blue pigment used to dye genes, yes. So, the blue compounds and indigo share structural similarities in the indole ring core. Yeah, the indoles in nature, very interesting, aren't they? And in both the basis for the color is a quinoid, which I don't know what that is exactly, but cool name. All of the six mushroom pigments the team identified, or oh, actually, uh, hold on, 
The quinoid I also checked earlier, and it was uh, it had a benzene core, so not indole, but a benzene, like benzene ring. You know how Mendeleev, who created the uh, or most of the uh, periodic table of elements via three consecutive daydreams or vision, by the way. Um, he just he you know he created all the the periodic table of elements from the benzene vision, the benzene ring, or like well, it's basically like alcohol kind of thing. No, sorry, benzene. It's like petrol, isn't it? All of the six mushroom pigments the team identified are products of a cascade reaction, starting with psilocybin. <clears throat> so here it is. A phosphatase enzyme, again an enzyme, is very important to eat alive foods in your diet because of enzymes. Because these enzymes, look, they do all that. I always read this stuff about enzymes doing all this work. The phosphatase enzyme takes off its phosphate group, converting it into silicon. So then it's no longer a 4-phosphorylated, I'm guessing, indole. And oxidizing lacase then creates silicyl radicals which combine to form C5 coupled subunits and then further polymerize via C7. I'm not sure what C5, C7 means. Carbon or what? Is this carbon? Let's look below. So it's a big cascade effect. Thanks, University of Utah. So there we have a good picture by Claudius Lenz et al. What's this article? Chemistryworld.com, Royal Society of Chemistry. So I've referenced back down here. What exactly the blue pigments do, however, remains a mystery. But I really like the hypothesis here. I, I'm tempted to agree. So they don't have any evidence for this yet, but they think it's an on-demand repellent against predators. Says Hofmeister. <laughs> the compounds might produce reactive oxygen species. So that's a, a free radical, right? which are toxic to any insect nibbling on the mushrooms. Reactive oxygen species. Okay. Is that good for humans, or is that also bad for us? That's also not good for us, then, is it? Or what? Free radicals and all that. That's oxidation, right? We're always trying to take antioxidants. So the, the compounds might produce, reactive might produce, so they don't know. Reactive oxygen species which are toxic to any insect nibbling on the mushrooms. Yeah, I think that's a, a very, a very uh, logical hypothesis. Okay. Oh, good. They're going to see a lot of follow-up studies. Good, good. So that's interesting. Oh, good to see it's been legalized in a few U.S. states as well. I did read something on that a few months ago as well. Good, legalize all psychedelics and legalize cocaine too. Legalize all the medicinal plants. All right, cool. Anyway, I thought that was worth showing you guys. Leave a like. Not for my dopamine hit that, oh, they love me, they love my video. No, I want you to leave a like so that the video gets out to more people because it catches on algorithms on YouTube and then it gets shown in like relative and, and recommended videos to other you know, similar video tags and so on. All right, and it'll help grow my channel, all right? It's also good for all of us. That means I will be able to continue the YouTube channel if you didn't get why that's good for you. <laughs> so like the video and all the other videos.